I'd like to show some more advanced polygon digitizing tools in QGIS 3. I displayed a Farm Service Administration Color IR image. I covered that in an earlier video. You can look at it if you're not sure how to do that. And I'm going to quickly digitize some polygons here for stand boundaries. Now I'm doing a very poor job because I'm doing this to show QGIS. So it's not going to have the detail one might uh, both in the specificity of the types, that is the land cover types, the vegetation types, or in the boundary accuracy. So here I go. I first need to create a new geo package layer or shape file. I'm going to save this into a geo package. I'm navigating to where I have my data, and I'll call this land cov1 for my first land cover data layer. I'm going to make it a polygon type of the many types I can choose. And I have to make sure I specify my coordinate system. I'm using our common one. And I'll give this a forest type attribute. That's text data with a maximum length of 20. So I need to add that to the list as well as an ID that will generate automatically. And I'll say OK. And now I'm ready to start digitizing. I want to open the editing by toggling the editing and I made sure that I have this advanced editing toolbar activated. Remember I can do that in the view down here in the toolbars. Make sure advanced digitizing toolbar is turned on. So I want to begin digitizing. I've covered snapping in an earlier video. I'm going to set the snapping but this time I'll set it to three meters. And then the advanced toolbar I'll be using here in a bit. First, I'm going to create my first polygon. So I'll add a new polygon feature. And I'm just going to do this black spruce stand really quickly right here. Again, a series of left clicks. When I'm done, I right click. It asks me for the FID, which will auto generate in the forest type. I'm not going to give the forest type right now. Notice it comes up dark. When I'm digitizing land cover, I'll have to go down to the properties and make the fills transparent. So again, I'm clicking here first on the simple fill, then the color patch, and then down at the bottom there's a slider. I can slide it over to something like 15%, um, and that's okay. And then I like to make the stroke a little bit wider for the bounding line. And if I apply that and say OK, you can see why. So it's a little darker. I can see that I've digitized and there's a line around it. So I know what I've done, but I can also use the edge that I can see underneath to help me in further digitizing. So there's one trick here for digitizing. I could try and digitize this adjacent polygon, this opening, but I'd have to try and match and snap the edge. And I could do that, but that would be slow. There's a uh, feature here that allows us to allow overlap or avoid overlap on the active layer. So the active layer is the one I'm digitizing. So if I turn this avoid overlap on, I can click inside anywhere when I want to add a new polygon and start digitizing again a series of left clicks. And you see the edge shows up there inside. It looks like I'm making a mistake. These polygons are going to overlap. I don't want them to do that. But when I right click to end, and say OK, it actually cuts it along the edge. There's no overlap at all between them. If I don't have this turned on, if I allow overlap, and I'm just going to do a random polygon out here, you'll see it saves that overlapping part. And that's not something we want. We don't want overlapping layers because if I were to calculate the total area, my stand boundaries summed would give me stand areas that sum to greater than the total area that I have, and we never want that. So I'll step back and remove that polygon and make sure that I have this avoid overlap in the active layer. And so I can then just digitize the rest of my polygons. Remember, starting inside and making sure that I end with everything inside and it automatically trims it to match the edge. So I can go ahead and do all the polygons I want. Again, a series of left clicks. Um, staying inside when I finish and OK. And so it goes around then building these polygons around the outside edge. All right, so I'm just adding as I go and that that um, not allowing overlap tool is really a lifesaver because it matches it along this edge. Now suppose I make a mistake. 
I decide that no, I really have another polygon here that I've digitized. And I, after looking at them or some other information comes up, I want to merge these two polygons. Well, I can do the merge feature. First, I will select a feature, right? So I can drag to select two, or I can shift and hold and select two. I have two features selected. I can go up to the merge tool here and click on the merge selected features. Now I want to skip all fields when I do the merge, otherwise it'll copy and do both the new ones and save internal lines. If I have the skip field turned on, this merge gets skipped. And I'll say OK, and then it merges those two. So that merge feature helps me there. Suppose I digitize a polygon and I want to split it later on. So I can basically use the split tool, and I can start on the outside, and digitize across and then right click and it splits the polygon into two different pieces. Suppose I wanted to cut an area out. So I'm digitizing a larger polygon and then inside there are a bunch of small polygons I want to get rid of or remove. I'll show that here by first digitizing a stand boundary for let's say this one vegetation type. Okay, so here I have a stand boundary for this larger type and then I want to split out these bare areas. I can do that by going to add a ring. And in this case, I'm cutting a hole out of the inside. And you see then it disappears. We can see that better if I change the properties and change the transparency down a little bit. So you can see there's a hole in there now. Maybe I don't want to split it out in this case because I have rock as a land cover type, or maybe this is just a stand boundaries and I want vegetation. But So whether I cut it out as a ring or cut it out as another land cover type are two separate things. If I want to split, I can actually split inside by generating a filled ring. So I can left click here, so I can click along. And this is a filled ring, right? So I get then either a hole with a ring, or if I want to break a stand inside a stand, I can use a filled ring. So these advanced tools allow you to build your database using the split and the merge tools, making sure that you control whether you allow overlap or not for very efficient digitizing.